John Anon says, Father bless. If someone like Elder Ephraim, Father Sarah from Rose, or Brother Jose Munoz is venerated but not officially glorified, what is the difference between praying for them versus praying to them? Is there any problem with praying to them if they are not officially glorified by the church? Um, well, we, we, out of humility and out of uh, uh, a sense of uh, uh, the deference to the to the church as a whole and the voice of the church often you know, coming through the people, but also obviously the hierarchy uh, publicly in church until the saints are for the most part. I've, I know of exceptions to this rule in Greece, in monasteries, on Athens and other places where they didn't, they didn't wait until the, the official, let's say official uh, enrolling of the saints into the Synaxarian or the, the list of saints. They were already chanting their, praises on their feast day and having icons and everything. So there are exceptions to this rule, but generally the, the consensus seems to be that in public we refrain from, you know, uh, celebrating their feast day or commemorating them uh, as official saints. Again, there are, seems to be exceptions to that rule, but uh, uh, I I think that there are many examples. St. Stephen the New Theologian is one where long before any kind of hierarchical endorsement, he was venerating his own elder and considered him a saint and, and, and wrote services and I think had icons made. I'm not sure, but I think so. And we have other examples of that happening on a personal level. And so there's not an intentionally so. People think this is a weakness of orthodoxy. No, it's an intentional thing that we do. We don't look to that kind of very... I don't know what you call a legal process that they have in Catholicism where they want, you know, they go through a very legal structured uh, process where they have a devil's advocate, I think, or they, they kind of test and they look for miracles. This thing is very organic and orthodoxy because of course the saints for the vast majority of the history of the church were never officially glorified ever. Like most saints that we have in the Synaxarian never had that, declaration of the hierarchy they just entered into the local church because everybody venerated them and they wrote service to them and they and they were venerated the vast majority of saints never had an official confirmation of their quote sainthood um so that's how the church has done it for the vast majority of its history i think more and more we're getting to the idea which i think is not from the orthodox tradition but from outside of you know a lot of um how can I say, uh, de like almost like we wait for them to tell us who's a saint. No, the faithful organically grassroots, whatever you want to call it, are drawn to the elders and saints and ascetics and martyrs and glorify them and, and commemorate them and honor their memory. And, and, you know, an iconographer makes an icon over here and a hymnographer makes a service, writes a service to other saints, you know, other contemporary saints, you know, almost immediately, in Greece, over the last, I've been, I was in Greece 20 years, and certainly since the late 90s, it seems that almost immediately the church wrote services for many of the saints that have now, you know, 20 years later been recognized as saints. The, the people of God recognized St. Paisios, Porfirios, Jacobos immediately. And services and icons were being painted long before they were officially recognized. And so I think it's a very organic thing. And, um, I don't know if there's any rules I can point you to, frankly. Uh, oh, there's this, there's deference to the church, absolutely, in the sense of the hierarchy and the decisions of the hierarchy, but there's also a grout, a grassroots, let's say, groundswell of veneration for, for many who people simply love. And 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 there's signs that they're they've been glorified by God with miracles. Like Father Sarah from Rose has many people um consider him a saint, and they there's miracles that have been recorded and Icons have been made and services have been written. And that's long before there's been any official anything. So I think on a personal level, many of these are going to be venerated in their in people's icon corners with either photographs or even icons made. And it'll just, the time will tell whether that will then become sufficient to be enrolled and have services written. And then they're put in the Synaxar and they're put in the Manan 
and they become, you know, one of those venerated by the church. It's an organic process and will end today with the hierarchy almost always uh, approving or, or, or submitting their names for commemoration. That's how it is today. But it wasn't like that for the vast majority of the history of the church. Um, so as far as praying for them or praying to them, uh, I remember Elder Paisos, they would definitely, an elder, uh, well, St. Paisos I, I know best because in northern Greece, you know, I knew a lot of, I went to the monasteries, found him, and I knew his spiritual children. And some were celebrating his memory and having and singing his praises on the day of his repose, and others were still waiting. So there's, there wasn't like one thing chosen by the very, he's, you know, he started, he has spiritual children started a number of monasteries um, on Athos, Kelia, but uh, outside of Athos, there's three monasteries in Halkidiki, which are started with his blessing and his guidance. And one of them had the services chanted and others did not. Um, and, but they would do them, they would do the Trisagian prayers on his, uh, on his uh, names day, but then they would also chant his service. So I, it was both and, I don't know what to say. Um, there's, uh, I think that we, we definitely ask those who've gone before us and have been approved by God and been in, embraced through a variety of, signs to pray for us. I think it's a very almost natural, is that the word? Movement of the soul, right? Um, and I think, you know, what I what I remember saying for a long time before they were officially glorified, I would say, um, and do say about others today, um, something like, I remember, uh, Lord, in your kingdom, you know, elder so-and-so, and by his prayers, save my soul. So it seems like a kind of a both and stance seems to be a, a wise way to approach it. 